What's up guys, it's Alex from Maximum Charge and this is the King Bull Rover. Now this is advertised as a soft tail all-terrain e-bike. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And it does have some parts that I like. It's got the hydraulic brakes, it's got the dual crown fork, it's got a big front headlight. So there are parts about this bike that I like and there's a few parts that could use some improvement. I heard a quote uh, from Seth over at Berm Peak, great channel, check out his channel. He said something along the lines of, for $10, you can either get a really good hot dog or a shitty lobster. And this rear suspension, well, we're gonna talk about this rear suspension today and you guys will decide which category it falls into. So today we'll go over the specs and components of the King Bull Rover, and then as always, we're gonna take it out for a test ride. And if you guys do wanna check out this bike, it is listed in the description below, along with any other coupon codes or discounts that I might be able to offer. So without further ado, guys, let's check out the specs and components of this bike, the King Bull Rover, and then we're gonna take it out for a test ride. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the specs and components of the King Bull Rover e-mountain bike. Let's start at the top. Simple rubberized grips, Hydraulic disc brake levers. And it looks like these are U-Link branded. Basic control panel. We're gonna get into the display settings later. Bright minimalist display. Seven speed Shimano shifter and a half twist throttle. And this bike does have a short stem with wider handlebars for enhanced off-road control. Moving on down, we've got our cable management and the dual crown fork, which is not adjustable. Nice looking headlight up front, which looks like it is fairly powerful and will help you see at night. CST BFT, 20 by four inch size knobby tires. And we also have 180 millimeter disc brake rotors in the front and back with the U-Link hydraulic disc brake calipers. And the front fork does have these bumpers to prevent the fork from hitting the frame. Plastic fender, integrated battery in the frame. Here's our charge port right here. And holding down this button will show you how much power is left in the battery. Battery also has an on-off switch on the other side. Basic plastic pedals. And this bike is advertised to have front and rear suspension. However, we're gonna talk about this rear suspension later. Seat is fairly wide and squishy. No rear light in the back, but you do get a reflector. And the bike also comes with this giant rear mudguard in the back. Seven speed Shimano shifter in the back. Shimano derailleur with a derailleur guard and a medium sized chain ring up front. Let's take the battery out, turn the key to unlock the battery, and then we can take the battery out. And here's our 48 volt, 17 and a half amp hour battery. Taking a look at the controller hidden inside the frame, we can see it is a 25 amp controller, which means this 750 watt nominal motor will peak at 1200 watts. Next up, let's take a look at the display. So to turn it on, you hold the power button down. Nice minimalist looking display. We've got our battery bar up top. You could cycle through trip distance. Voltage, which is nice. I love that they have voltage, fantastic. Current, excellent that they have that. Your current times the voltage is gonna give you your wattage output, but I'm happy they have just the current as well. Time the bike has been on, and obviously your odometer as well. To turn the headlight on, you hold the plus button. To get into the advanced settings, you hold the plus and minus buttons down where you can adjust your screen brightness, mile an hour or kilometer per hour, screen timeout, wheel diameter, PA is your speed limit and that goes all the way up to 41, which on pedal assist five will give you max speed of 31 miles an hour. And with this bike, you do get a three amp actively cooled charger that has a fan and exhaust in the back. And we also get this nice little tool kit in the box. Let's see what we get. Handy dandy multi-tool, which you can carry with you for roadside repairs, or you can use it to assemble your bike. Manual, and a wrench, and another wrench. Guys, here's what I look like on this bike at five foot 10. If I am sitting on the seat, I can pretty much get my toes down to the ground. Although if I did remove this back fender and this rear reflector, I might be able to get an additional two inches lower on the seat. So if you are a shorter rider, this bike might be okay. 
All right, guys, so check this out. Front suspension is pretty good. It does have some travel. And now we're gonna run into our first big issue of this bike, which is the rear suspension, or lack thereof. I barely feel any travel in the suspension at all. There's a little bit, but it might as well be a hardtail. So I think King Bull definitely needs to use a different suspension in the back, something a little bit softer. I guess if you're a heavier rider, this might be okay. Maybe if you're like in the 250 to 300 pound range, but for me at 200 pounds, this is a very stiff rear suspension. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take this thing out on the road. See you guys there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are on the King Bull Rover. This is advertised as a soft tail all-terrain e-bike. Maybe you might think this is an e-mountain bike. And what we're gonna do today is bring it through its paces. We'll do all the hill climbing testing, the zero to 20 testing, the top speed testing, all the tests. And just for your reference, there is 30 PSI in the tire. I am 200 pounds without a backpack. It's about 45 to 50 degrees. We are on a full fresh charge right now. And we're gonna test the zero to 20 first while we have that full battery charge, put it in PAS5. We've unlocked the top speed, full voltage, throttle only. Ladies and gentlemen, three, two, one, go. A very soft start. Twenty. All right. Probably should have checked if the speedometer was accurate. So pedal assist one throttle cuts us off at ten miles an hour. Looks like it is dead on. Hmm. A little bit of a delay in the throttle. Throttle. Power. Wow, that's a big delay. Throttle. Power. Oh my God. That's not good, guys. Next up, we're gonna do our main hill climb test. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, very soft start there. We'll see how it goes, guys. Guys, if you like videos like this, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. If I've earned your subscription, like the video if you like it. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and I do have two Facebook groups, E-Bike Addicts and High Speed E-Bikes, 40 miles and up. Let me know what you think of this bike in the comments below. And we are finishing up at just about almost 20 miles an hour, just about 20 miles an hour. All right then, downhill speed test. Let's check out the free spinning speed of the wheel. 32, almost 33 miles an hour. We'll go ahead and pedal this bike up to speed and see how fast it goes down this hill. I know some of you guys think the downhill speed test is useless and I partially agree with you guys, but it's good to know because some motors have a higher RPM than others and it's good to see where these bikes end up. All right, so down the hill, we're getting a solid 32. Looks like we're pretty much achieving the RPM of the free spinning wheel. I am pedaling right now at 30 miles an hour and I'm getting plenty of pedal resistance. That is fantastic. And next up, we're gonna slowly head on over to our steep hill climb test. This bike has wider handlebars. Let's see if I can make it through. Ah, oh, there we go, yes. A little practice for some single track e-mountain biking. You guys think this bike would be okay on a single track mountain bike trail? Let me know in the comments below. All right, steep hill climb test. Come to a complete stop at this line. Throttle only. Wait for this car. Three, two, one, go. I don't know what you are doing, my friend, but we are going. 48 volts. And it does have the bigger wheels, which means it has a little bit less torque. Ooh. All right, can it make it? Six miles an hour. Oh my goodness. Oh, that motor's struggling five miles an hour. Can it make it? Ooh, I'm like struggling to stay upright. Oh man, five miles an hour. <laughs> it made it. All right, five miles an hour. Head on down. 
go down to our top speed site. And for our top speed, we're just gonna do one direction. We're only gonna go down one way because I don't really think this is all that fast of a bike. My guess is that it'll probably get 28, 29. It'll stay somewhere in the legal limit for an e-bike. We're gonna get up to speed first and then duck down, throttle only. 27. Yeah, see? This is a pretty much legal e-bike. We'll pretty much just get to 28 miles an hour. Maybe if it was a little bit warmer. Maybe if I was a little bit lighter. But we're at 28 now, 27. So this is a 27, 28 mile an hour e-bike. And now we'll take it on our mini off-road course. In my opinion, I think this should be a hardtail. If this was cheaper and you got it as a hardtail, I gotta say it would probably feel the same as it does right now because it does technically have rear suspension, but this thing barely is doing any work. It's not really doing a whole lot. I would have been perfectly happy if this was a hardtail and maybe you guys can get it for cheaper. But it's, I mean, it's handling this just fine. I do hear some fender rattling. I don't know if it's the back or the front, but it's not bad. I think the wheels are doing most of the work here in terms of shock absorption and going over bumps, making them feel a little bit smoother. But we're hauling it, guys. It's doing it for a budgety mountain bike. Not too bad. That's where I fell in one of my videos. Something went through the grass here, some kind of truck, and it left some deep tread marks in here. I hit this edge in the wrong direction, so my tire ended up getting caught in the edge, and I went down. It is what it is. I'll probably make the same mistake again, because you know how it is. You don't make the same mistake twice. You do it three or four times just to make sure. Back we go. On the off-road course. Something is rattling. What's rattling? I think it's this front fender right here that's rattling. Yeah, I hear it hitting the wheel or hitting something. What are you gonna do? Some people don't even mount the fenders on this bike. I've seen some reviewers just leave them off completely. And that's fine. If you're gonna be mountain biking, some people don't want fenders, it's just more weight. Although you are gonna get some dirt on your back, of course, and all over your bike from the front wheel. So it's always a trade-off. What are you gonna do? Man, there is such a delay in the throttle, it's nuts. Like, sometimes I hit the throttle and I think something's broken, like something's not working. And then I realize it's just a delay. The power is okay on this bike. It's nothing to write at home about. It's a 48 volt system, lower power, lower amp controller. This is a budget option, guys. So if that's what you're looking for, maybe this will be a good option. Crossing over, jumping the curb. Yeah, those big wheels help a lot. The big wheels are gonna do most of the work in terms of making bumps feel tolerable. Suspension is there. It's doing something. Yeah, it's doing something. Jumping off that curb pretty much felt like a hardtail. Pedaling this bike, I do get plenty of resistance. Even after 25 miles an hour, I feel like I could pedal this thing up to 30 if I wanted to. The CST BFT tires, they are on the louder side. You will make your presence known with these tires. And as you can see, I am riding on the sidewalk and I don't feel bad about it because this looks like a normal bicycle. It has bicycle sized tires, a bicycle sized frame, big bump right here. Ugh. Yeah, that could have been better with the softer suspension in the back. The seat comfort is okay. Not too bad, although we're only five miles into the ride. You guys usually swap out seats anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The riding position is more on the aggressive side because after all, this is more of a kind of like an aggressive off-roader. You have more control with the handlebars when the handlebars are wider like this and they're lower. 
So you can ride this thing pretty aggressively and be confident in how much control you have. The handling feels fine. It doesn't feel quite as zippy as a 20 by four inch wheel sized bike, but those bigger wheels will make it easier to go over larger obstacles. Wow, a bumper. Okay, someone lost the bumper. Let's keep testing the off-roading. What? Handling the bumps pretty good. Could be better though. I do really like that it does show you voltage and it shows your current also, so you can see how many watts you're using. So 17, 18, 20 amps. Let's keep going guys. We'll try and uh, power through this steep hill. We're gonna pedal though. We're not gonna just throttle. We'll see how it does. Oh yeah, we're struggling. 22 amps, 21 amps, 19 amps, 20 amps. Yeah, we're pushing it. I'm using my legs. Just realized I forgot to do a brake test with this bike. 20 mile an hour brake test. Let's see how it goes. There we go. Well, hydraulic disc brakes, ladies and gentlemen. They do what they were designed to do. Ready? Again. Yeah. Back wheel locks right up. Front wheel stops you pretty good. Well, let's keep going, guys. We're just gonna be doing a mini range test. We'll give this bike a solid 10 miles and we'll see what the voltage is. My suspicion is that it'll be okay. The battery isn't the biggest battery, but at the same time, this isn't the highest power e-bike. And so it's not really using the battery all that much. Oh, the sidewalk. This is, this is a true off-road test, guys. My God. And if you hear my voice, my voice sounds the way it does because of the quote-unquote suspension of this bike. It is what it is. Oh my God. Christ. Oh. Holy Oh. I feel like I'm abusing this bike. I'm an e-bike abuser. This thing is rattling around, making all kinds of noise. Yeah, it doesn't like this. What are you gonna do, guys? If this was a hardtail, I would understand. I would get it, I, I get it, like, okay. It's a hardtail bike. It doesn't have any suspension, I get it. But this is a dual suspension bike, guys. I don't know. Final thoughts on the King Bull Rover after this initial ride. It's a budget all-terrain bike. Honestly, it could be more budget friendly if they just got rid of the rear suspension and just made it a hardtail. But everything else is not too bad. The fenders are kind of dumb looking. They could use some upgrading as well. Honestly, you could probably get rid of them altogether. I do like the display. It has voltage and current. So right now we're accelerating. We're getting 23 amps, 24 amps. And I can see my voltage, which is very useful for knowing how much battery you have left. Better than the battery bar. And the battery bar right now is almost halfway. It's maybe like 60, 70%. The brakes work good. Front suspension is acceptable for a budget e-bike. The front headlight is very nice looking. Big throttle delay. This is, uh, that definitely needs some improvement. The battery is on the medium to smaller size. And so is the power. So I guess they are matching in that sense. The motor is on the louder side. In fact, I even feel some vibration coming through the seat. I don't know if you guys can hear that. This bike will keep it in the legal realm, in the class three realm. So you will not be going faster than 28 miles an hour with this bike unless you pedal. And then if you pedal really hard, you might get it to 30, especially with the pedal resistance all the way up to 30, maybe even past 30. So that is very nice. If you guys want more info on this bike, check out the link in the description below. Any coupon codes or discounts that are available will be listed down there as well. And by the way, guys, for this range test, I am pretty much pedaling the whole time. So it's not gonna be throttle only. I'll throw up on the screen what the voltage is of this battery after a 10 mile ride. But we're pedaling folks, we're, 
We're pushing into the pedals. Thankfully, we have resistance well past 25 miles an hour. That's it for today, folks. Until next time.